Yes, hello everyone and welcome to all our West Australian football fans to another edition of Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. Are you ready for finals action? Spring is in the air and so is September. Finals footy is here and today on Around the Waffle, we'll have your preview of week one of the 2023 finals. Paul Persick with you in the back chat studios and pumped up and ready for finals action is Mark Forey Foreman. Finals are here for Forey. Welcome along. What a big month of footy we've got in store. Thanks, Paul. I am pumped. I don't think I can match your pumped levels. I can see that you are absolutely be- bursting out the chair, but um, yeah, it's been a long time coming. You've You've penciled this in from a long way out, and uh, they're finally here. Which Absolutely. Is well, September exciting. is the greatest month of the year, after all. It is. I love uh, finals footy. is a different. It's a different beast. Um, and yeah, having a look at at like the games just have a different feel. Like mm. they've got the different energy, and it's so so good. So uh, yeah, I am pumped. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be good to to see. What eventuates from an unbelievably close season. You Certainly know, has been. Have four teams end on the same amount of points. Yeah. It's just incredible. And, of course, a few twists and turns along the way yeah. as well. Where does it leave September? Will we have more of that? Only time will tell. We've got Stan Wright from East Perth standing by in just a moment. But before we do, just quickly for you, one of the big leading stories was four umpire mm. system now for every final. Will that result in better management of officiating games on the field? There's been a lot of talk around it. Yeah, it has. And, you know, I, I read that they want to uh, protect the guys going for the footy and uh, allow them a, an unimpeded go at the ball. So um, hopefully it does, um, following suit in the AFL, I guess. So uh, I think it's a, a positive step. It also allows exposure for you know younger umpires in finals footy too. Fans, let us know what you think. Four umpires for all finals. Good decision or bad decision? Let us know in the comments below. This is Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. East Perth, their first finals appearance since 2016. They're coming into September with a loss, but it's important how this side regroups heading into that elimination final against Claremont on Sunday. One of their big stars, he is ready to rock and roll in September, is Stan Wright. And he's good enough to join us here on Around the Waffle. Stan, good morning, mate. How are you? Hey, boys. How are you going? Going very well. Great to have you here on the show. Always tough to come into finals with a loss in the last round of the season. How have you guys regrouped since uh, the game against West Perth? Yeah, it was, it was a difficult, um, I guess, field to swallow on, on Saturday. Um, it's never nice losing our footy, especially against your arch rivals. Um, we haven't actually... We got together for recovery on Sunday, but given the eight-day uh, break, we were actually going... Uh, we had uh, Monday off. Um, but we'll go in tonight and um, take all of the learnings from Saturday. A lot of lot of positives um, to take out of it, even though we we lost. Um, a few things we we certainly need to look at and, and work on. Um, but you know we'll, we'll do all the prep um, needed for this week, and we're we're all really keen to to play in a final. Um, we haven't played in finals since 2018, I believe, and I think only one of one or two of the boys has, has played a final for East Perth. So, um, yeah, we're, we're really keen to to show out and, on Sunday and um, advance to the next stage. Hey, Sam, Mark Foreman here. Um, you mentioned you had a, a recovery on Sunday. Was that a sort of a recovery barbecue style, Sean Darcy-esque, to uh, regroup, recuperate? No, it wasn't. It was just <laughs> uh, a nice... Um, Flat white, no sugar down at uh, Trig and, and a swim, mate. So um, no, 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 uh, no barbecues. Uh, hopefully, we we uh, keep that for the for the uh, the Monday after the, the final Sunday um, in September for us. First uh, final since 2018 for East Perth, and you're coming up against uh, a real strong side in Claremont. Are you expecting a real physical challenge from the Tigers, who have come into form at the right time? Yeah, it will be if if um, you know. If any of our last uh, sort of games, uh, anything to to look back on, um, they're always really physical against Claremont. Um, got a really big bodied midfield, um, and and across the ground there, got some some big guys in their in their team. Um, they've got a really good spine as well. So, um, you know, with with you know that they've got the finals experience, um, and, and we don't as such. But you know, we're really keen to to get out there, and you know, we've got sort of nothing to lose at this point, um, and we're all super excited and. Um, raring to go so um, we're hoping for a big turnout as well from our fans on, on Sunday and um, yeah hopefully we can get the result. Stan tell us about finals footy you, you mentioned a lot of the guys haven't obviously played for East Perth in finals footy but throughout your junior days and into your senior days it's um it's a different it's a different beast isn't it? 
Yeah, it is. Um, oh, look, it's, it's completely different playing league footy in a final. I couldn't tell you what it's like because I haven't played in one, but, um, you know, I've played in a, in a losing reserves flag, um, losing Colts flag. So <laughs> hopefully, um, hopefully we can, yeah, get a better result on, on Sunday and, and progress to, um, to next week. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be really physical. Uh, won't be much time out in the ground. Um, so I think, Whatever team can sort of uh, settle the, I guess the game off first and um, get their hands on the footy will go a long way in getting the result. You've had two great meetings against the Tigers this season. One and one is the uh, the ledger. Across those two meetings, which of those Claremont players you think is going to be the hardest to target, hardest to contain as far as impact on the game is concerned? Yeah, good question. I, I think it, it goes without saying that their stars, um, Jai Bolton, Bailey Rogers, are probably their two that um, really drive them um, going forward. And off, you know, Jai's been playing a bit off half back, and and um, and Bailey's um, you know playing forward, but then going in inside. So those are the two guys, obviously, that are that are tough to contain. Um, but I think you know that other than those two guys, they've got quite a really well uh, rounded um, team. So. Um, I'm not too sure what we're going to do to, to counter that in terms of, you know, if we put any work into either of those two guys. Um, we haven't actually, you know, you know previewed, previewed the game yet, so I'm not too sure on our, on our plans. But, um, yeah, they've, they've not only those two guys, they've got a number, no, number of players that can step up in, in big moments um, and wrestle the m- momentum their way, but we'll, we'll do everything we can to, to make sure it's um, going our way. And, um, yeah, we're just... Super keen for the challenge this week. Stan, we really appreciate your time here on Around the Waffle. All the best on Sunday in the elimination final against Claremont. Thanks, gents. Appreciate that was your time. Stanley Wright joining us from the East Perth Football Club. Huge game it is going to be. In fact, of course, East Perth, first final since 2018. And, of course, that was against Claremont in the elimination final. I tell you what, that was also a very good game. Reckon this one could be an absolute ripper come Sunday. I can't remember back that far, Paul. Who, how did they go then? Well, it was a tough, uh, tough game it was uh, yeah. over there in that elimination final. In fact, only four players to have played a game this year have played a final as well. Yeah, right. Including that one prior, Brayshaw, Crowden, uh, Hill... And Tedesco, they've played at least two or more finals. So there is a little bit of finals experience for East Perth. Won't be as much as Claremont, but we'll tell, uh, we'll preview that a little later on. What could be the key? Will it be finals experience or will it be form heading into the season? Just mm. a reminder, both those finals, ladies and gentlemen, are live, free and in full on the AFL app on Saturday and on Sunday. This is Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. Let's start off with the qualifying final that takes place on Saturday, also at Leaderville Oval, Subiaco and Peel Thunder. One and one in the ledger, but I tell you what, finals experience, I reckon, is going to be the key for both these sides. In fact, Peel Thunder have more current players with finals experience with Subiaco than Subiaco, 20 compared to 16. But here's the ledger as well. When you're looking at finals experience alone, Subiaco have 16 players with a combined 92 games. Does that come into a key on Saturday in that qualifying final? Or do you think Peel Thunder, especially with the form that they're on, could cause a little bit of a boil over against Subiaco on Saturday? Yeah, it's oh God, it's hard to predict this one. And, and you know, incredible that it's turned out this way. Um, 0.22%. Unbelievable. They, they finished, you know, they jumped. So... Um, Peel Thunder, you know, earning that. Um, 13 AFL listed players is huge. So 13, I think it's 13 AFL listed 13. players who have qualified. Yeah. Um, and you know, how, how many will play? We, we don't know, but that is, that's pretty formidable. It is. Um, and obviously with the AFL season done now, they're all available barring, you know, injury here and there. So, um, I look, I think I, I'm probably, I'm going to pick Peel. Um, peel. Yeah, I will because I think the that like bringing we've seen what AFL experience does in the waffle. Like we've seen some dominance from uh, players like that this year. But so. the same can be said for all the clubs, not just Peel Thunder. No, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just think with all those guys able to play together at the same time. Um, and uh, we spoke to uh, oh, who was it from Peel a couple of weeks ago? It was it Brady Gray? Yes, it was, and he was talking about the unity they have from yeah. you know right from top to bottom, and so it's been quite seamless when these guys come in and out of the team. So, um, look, 
with absolutely no confidence, I say that, you know, um, that I'll pick Peel because Subiaco are a quality side and they've got some of those players as well. They they do, of course. Zach Clark yeah. in the ruck, his uh, controlling of the contest will be absolutely crucial. But his facilitating of uh, the support all around the ground as well is going to be even more important because he lacked that against East Fremantle uh, last weekend. You've got to have the likes of Lee Kitchen firing on all cylinders, the Hickmott boys from midfield as well. And up forward, of course, it's going to be very difficult. We know Taj Schofield's going to be possibly out of this mm. game uh, with that injury he sustained in round 20. Uh, ben Sokol obviously held goalless, been in pretty lean form over the last month. He's also got to have support from Kent Field if he gets selected as well. He kicked four goals in a game recently uh, in the later stage of the season. And also, you have to have... Obviously, your key's firing, but obviously your young guns to really stand up. I reckon Drew Road and Aaron Hill down back is going to really be vital in holding the likes of Hancock and also uh, Corbett in that forward line to absolutely nothing. So if Subiaco can really get it together and have their young players stand up, not just their experienced ones, I reckon that, that could go a long way to the Lions winning. So I'm going to go the other way and uh, and pick Subiaco because for three quarters, they were fantastic against East Fremantle. Yeah, they yeah. just fell away in the last quarter. That quarter should not define how their path in the finals will go. No, and I don't think it will. You know, you can't you can't hang your hat on, you know, one bad quarter and say, oh, well, that's it. We're done now. So um, for, for me, like, I think it's going to be really important. Like, you mentioned guys like Drew Road, you know, standing up in defence. Um, limiting the amount of ball that goes inside forward 50 is going to be important for Subi. Um, you know, because, Cor- like, you know, seeing Josh Corbett up there and, um, you know, uh, a couple of guys that ha- have just provided such, um, you know, strong contested ball in the in the forward 50 for Peel is uh, quite daunting, quite intimidating. So, um, you know, limiting how much goes inside forward 50 will be important. And, um I, as we've spoken about all year, I think Zach Clark will have a, a big role to, to play in the outcome of this game. As I well. reckon he will, yeah. And definitely a role to play throughout the finals campaign if yep. Subiaco go deep into that uh, last dance on the 24th of September. So you've gone with Peel. I've gone with Subiaco. Let us know who you think is going to win fans. A qualifying final on Saturday. Let us know in the comments below. Now we go to the elimination final on Sunday. Also at Leadable, sudden death. No second chances for East Perth and Claremont. And as we spoke with Stan Wright earlier, I don't think the conference Confidence is deflated for East Perth going into that game against Claremont. Even though that loss against West Perth cost them the double chance, Claremont, they'll be buoyed by their last uh, couple of weeks of very good wins at home. But, of course, no second chances for them either. The loser is out for the year. Yeah, elimination finals footy. And it's, um, you know, it's tough. But uh, this is where, you know, this is where we've got to. Claremont, you know, six weeks ago would have probably been surprised to find themselves here. But they are because of that you know, that poor run of form. So, um, yeah, it's, it's like, I, I, I'm not convinced with what Claremont's done. I, like I keep saying, I'm so confused. It's been very un Claremont like, and, um, although they've won a couple against teams they should have, I, I'm, I'm going East Perth here. The, the midfield, like you look at that on paper is, um, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Brayshaw, yeah. Schumacher, Crowden, Wright as well. And Amaduri, who's come into some good form in the last four weeks. Yeah. You look at that midfield alone, that is high quality right there. But you're up against another Claremont midfielder, another midfield in Claremont, I should say, that's also high quality. Rogers, Bolton, Edwards, yeah. uh, also Elliott and Eastland in the ruck as well. I reckon that ruck contest, Eastland, up against most likely Bonamelli, is yeah. going to be so crucial. It will be, yeah, for sure. And, and you know, winning the footy out of the middle first is um you know goes a long way to deciding a game but um we are waiting on the uh the news and east perth sweating on the fitness of mitch croden so he's been out since i think it was around 18, 18 yep. with an ankle so uh whether he gets up in time is, is something that will you know will will be a big factor in this game as well we know we know how important he is he finished quite high in our uh top gun player of the year votes so um Mitch Croden, a really important player to East Perth. And Declan Mountford as well. He yep. also uh, was ruled out late in the season with that injury as well. Will he come back for Claremont in that elimination final? Only time will tell. I'm going the same way as you. I'm going to go mm. East Perth as well. Even though their back line and their forward line is a little bit suspect, their midfield can get the job done. And a, c- a couple of those players like Schumacher, Brayshaw and Wright can swing up forward and bolster that forward line depth. But they can't be relying on them all the time. You need to have the like of Van Diemen to Desco up forward kicking those goals and, you know, applying some all-important scoreboard pressure. Dittmar and Wilcox have got to limit that inside 50 penetration for Claremont. I reckon they can do that, especially now that they face a sudden-death final. 
No second chances. I'm going East Perth by at least two goals, but I'm expecting a very physical contest. Well, I think so. I, part of me wonders, you know, what toll the, the physical contest last week will take, you know, East Perth versus West Perth. That, mm. that was a tough game it was. For, for the Royals. So, um, yeah, look, I, I think despite that, um, I, I think they'll be too strong for Claremont. I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm off the Claremont wagon because I'm, you know, I need to, you need to see them. If they win this game, I think that's sorry. If I'll start again, if Claremont wins this game, that goes a long way to building that confidence and getting the Claremont back that we know mm. uh, is, is there. But unfortunately, the last sort of six weeks of yeah, just not being overly convinced, and um, I think East Perth will be too strong. And by the way, all both those finals are also live on Channel 7 as well, Saturday and Sunday from 2 o'clock. And by the way, if you can't make it, don't fret. You've got the Channel 7 mm-hmm. broadcast in front of you and also the AFL app as well if you can't make those games. But we're hoping to see some big crowds on Saturday and Sunday for the first week of the finals. This is Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the WAFL. You're with Paul Persick and Mark Form. Right, now, we've put together the final five forecast for you to uh, determine the fate of each of the teams that make up the final five. We'll start off with East Fremantle. Well-deserved minor premiership. I mean, they've been a really good side to watch. And their brand and their depth everywhere around the ground. And last year's finals experience, they have a lot to learn from their finals experience. And even though there's a bit of uncertainty around Milan Murdoch, will he come back for the second semi-final? Injuries to the big bodies up forward in uh, Marsh and Dylan O'Reilly. Mm. That's the only real problems. Other than that, there's not much negatives there for East Fremantle. I'm still back in my statement from pre-season that they'll finish uh, as premiers. Yeah, I think, like, I'm happy to back that in as well. They've put together such a good run of form and uh you know from all accounts the way that they're doing it has been really impressive too so um yeah i i think rightly so they're our flag favorites yeah and deservedly so i mean when you go into a final series nine wins in a row two games clear atop the ladder and you've got so many good players in red hot form you've got a great brand of footy and you're coached by you know a, a man who's got premiership experience in, in Bill Monaghan yeah. you've got the complete picture for East from out they'll, they'll break the 25 year drought there's no doubt about that <laughs> oh huge call well I made that call pre-season I'm sticking by it equally huge I mean I wasn't here pre-season Paul so I'll take your word for it but um, yeah it's theirs it's theirs to take um, they've got the week off they can look on as uh, the rest of the team slug it out so um, exciting times for East Fremantle and it, like you said it's been a long time for, for their supporters to wait and I know how passionate they are too so it's a, it's a really exciting opportunity for them certainly is we do wish them all the best in that second semi-final Subiaco second place of course with that win, with, with, despite the loss they were able to still hang on to second place but I think that there are some problems there for Subiaco that could really hurt them. If, if Ben Sokol continues on this slump in that forward 50, and if the opposition back line, especially Peel Thunder, are able to work him out, that could be a real detriment to Subiaco. Um, their lack of continuity as well in those big losses, that's what really hurt them. And their lack of support for Zach Clark as well. And, and by that, I mean, you know, he's dominating the hitouts, but their midfielders really haven't been able to follow up as consistently as they would have liked to, especially with that loss to East Fremantle. And in those games, those big finals, those big finals-like games, they're a bit of a mixed bag. I don't think they can make the grand final this year. I Ooh. think they'll fall at the last hurdle. But having said that, they should be happy that they made the five after missing the finals last year. Yeah, so I, like I, I've said it a couple of times, it almost feels like maybe they've exceeded expectations, um, overachieved perhaps, but... Um, I'm sure that's not the feeling within within their group. Um, you know, they've they've got a lot of belief. I I also am, you know, I feel like you can back in guys like Sokol to, um, you know, arrest that form slump. He needs to bounce back in big games. Needs because, to. And so you, your very best players play well in the big games. Absolutely. So that's why it, it's going to be an important. Um, an important watch this week. And Sokol's especially a real key finals yeah. player. I mean, when September comes around and Sokol's in the action, that's where, and because he's played some really good games across the regular season, but finals, he just takes it up a notch. I yeah. mean, he's a real good solid forward. And if he kicks a big bag of five or six this weekend, then Subiaco are going to win the game. Yep. And if he, and if he's not kicking five or six, at least, you know, just insert uh, inserting himself, asserting himself, pardon me, on the game, uh, is what players like that can do. And I don't be surprised to see it, whether it's, you know, seven or eight tackles inside forward 50 or, um, you know, if he if he's being held closely to goal, getting up the ground, taking a few marks. So players like that really 
need to stand up and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it. We know his quality, like it's there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think oh, I wouldn't, I don't know what my prediction is, but I, I think Subiaco have a bit of belief to, to, you know, go real deep into September. They should. How deep? Well, only time will tell. Peel Thunder. Now, you mentioned earlier 13 Fremantle mm. players uh, have qualified to play in WAFL finals. My concern is, will that unsettle the dynamic between the local players yeah. and the Fremantle players at this time? You know, taking in the comments that Brady Gray said, of course, the unity is there, and it's been evident in some of the big wins. But come finals time, will that be settled or will it be unsettled? And especially over the last few weeks, that Peel, they've been down one quarter and they've been up another and then they've been down another. It's a four-quarter game that they need to really polish up on in the finals. They've got Ben Hancock there who's a great leader and their midfield rotation is rock solid. I mean, Bell, Hancock, Brody, Corbett. Corbett can play a bit in, uh, in the middle as well as up forward. Very versatile. But it doesn't seem to convince me. I think if they play that game that they had against Swan Districts, if they're in up and down form throughout the four quarters, then that could go. Uh, that could be a real, real bad omen for Peel Thunder. I'm pretty. I'm actually predicting a straight sets exit. Sets exit. Oh, wow. Th- okay. They'll fall in two games. Did you say stra- straight uh, sets? Oh, straight sets. Okay. I'm not going the Michael Clark route. Come on. <laughs> Give me might, a spell. Thought you might have said something else. No, there, no, no, no. Their minds might be a bit distracted. Um, yeah, no, look, I understand. It's uh, it's also a concept not unfamiliar to finals time when you have multiple teams. So like. You, you know, my experience in a um, in a club system, so at North Beach, for example, when a team makes it and you've got players shuffling back and it can be, you're right, it can be disruptive. Um, how disruptive? I don't know. Like, uh, you know, you take on face value, of course, Brady Gray's not going to say, oh, yeah, we're a bit, you know, we're a bit dirty when the AFL players come back and this and that. So, you know, I, you take it on face value. They, they do seem reasonably unified, mm. but... Your point about the inconsistency is really important. And in finals footy, you can't afford to drop your level um, because you're playing the best teams absolutely. in the most pressurized environment mm. and other teams will capitalize. So absolutely, the key to the game is being consistent. And just because you have 13 AFL listed players doesn't mean it just happens. Um, they'll, Of course, they'll know that. You know, there's, there's a huge mental side to the game and uh, they need to come to play. I don't... I'm not subscribing to the straight sets exit but i i'm really interested to see how they go this week with that balance and that's what i'm looking forward to seeing yeah the balance and and the unity will be so important not just for pure thunder but all sides in that five come the first week of the finals east perth to be frank they should be in the double chance With, with the side that they've got the depth on paper if they hadn't lost to west perth and if they got the four points, they would have finished at least second or third. But that loss against West Perth really puts extra pressure on the Royals. Now, they have to regroup, and I expect them to do so. I'm still backing them in for the grand final. Okay. I'm still backing yep. them in. They'll go to the grand final the hard way. They'll have yeah. to win three finals, but I reckon they'll do it. They've got the belief in themselves. And look at the depth. We said midfield. They can you know, shift their players up forward as well to impact the scoreboard pressure. Their creative flair and their run and carry from midfield is so important. That's one of the big things I've loved about East Perth across the season. And I reckon they can make the big dance the hard way. Yeah, I, I, and the thing I've loved about it, and like maybe a bit biased because of the people we get to speak to, but particularly Hamish Brayshaw, uh, and the way that they're just enjoying their footy, rather, you know, it's not, not a chore and they're just having a, they're just having a lot of fun doing it. Um, and it's it's funny the the results that come when you're enjoying it and um, yep that you know super disappointed to slip to fourth but I do agree you know this is a team who is, not often do I feel like teams that finish outside the three same concept as the AFL outside the four you know can make it that far but East Perth I, I reckon I agree are ones that can do it so um, that that midfield control is is where it comes from I I think that's pretty clear when they play Claremont on the weekend it's that midfield battle and uh, I absolutely see you know the likes of Brayshaw and Croden if he's back and guys like that to to step up and and take them through this game and you wouldn't want to come up against them I'll tell you that much especially in finals time no no matter where you finish in the five and now Claremont who finished in fifth Rogers and Miles and Bolton, the key. They've got a great physical brand of football that uh, really can take anyone off their feet and really intimidate any opposition. But the conversion in front and inconsistent form is the reason why I at least have predicted that they'll be the first finals casualty. Yep. Um, kicking straight is so important. Like how often do you 
I think we said that last week. You kick behind after behind, and then the other team whips down and kicks. And Joel Weston summed it up well yeah. after the loss to East Fremantle in round 17. Yeah, yeah, and and yes, yeah, you certainly don't want that happening in finals either. Um, I yep, I've said a few times that yeah, I'm just a bit confused about the, the Claremont side that we've seen over the last six weeks, but. Um, you know, if they are able to cause a, uh, you know, a boil over, they may well find their, their Claremont rough and rugged footy, um, which, which we know they can play, but, um, yeah, uh, they'll bring their physical style. They, they sort of bashed up on Swan districts a few weeks ago and, and really, you know, put them to the sword. And, and that's the, the style that Claremont will need to bring if they're, if they're going to be any chance to, to you know, progress into September. Fans, let us know uh, your verdict on the final five teams. Who's going to make the grand final? Who's going to drop out early? Let us know on uh, our YouTube uh, feed. You can go on to Backchat Studios and search up this episode and uh, let us know in the comments below who do you think is going to make the big dance on September 24. Forey, thanks for your time as always, mate. Looking forward to a great final series where we're looking forward to reviewing it all on Tuesday. Pleasure. I look forward to it, Paul. And listeners and viewers, we thank you very much for your company as well on the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. Just a reminder as well, we've got social in operation, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Give us a big thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. And if you can't make the game, don't fret. Both finals this weekend will be live on Channel 7 as well as the AFL app. The qualifying final on Saturday between Subiaco and Peel Thunder and then the sudden death elimination final between East Perth and Claremont on the Sunday. Both at lead of a global, turning into a finals hub for this weekend. We look forward to your company on Tuesday to review the first week of the finals. In the meantime, enjoy your finals footy. We'll see you next time. 